Hey everyone, this is Andrew Tai and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you how to run LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. So we're going to be running the Windows version of this game because there is no macOS port unfortunately. And so we're going to be using a compatibility layer called Crossover in order to get this to work. And as you can see, it does work really well. Even though this is a Windows game running on the Mac operating system, we just have to make sure that we configure Crossover correctly. Today we're going to show you how to get this game running so you can go ahead and play this on your M1 Apple Silicon Mac. If you haven't subscribed already, then please consider subscribing. It only takes a moment to do, and you'll be able to keep up to date with the latest Mac gaming news. So the first step is going to be to click the link at the top of the description for my affiliate link for Crossover. If you do make a purchase through this link, then you'll be helping to support the channel and the work that I do. So once you get to the crossover page, what you can do is to scroll down here and then you can click the try now button. And this is going to give you a 14 day free trial where you can test out the full functionality of crossover. If you do decide to purchase, then please click my affiliate link and click the buy now button. If you use the coupon code Apple Gaming Wiki and click apply here, then you'll get a 25% discount off your crossover purchase. In this tutorial, I'm going to be using the trial. So I'm going to click the try now button. Now all I need to do is to enter my name and email address and then I can click the download trial now button. So crossover will begin a download process. This file is 340 megabytes in size. So please wait a moment for that to complete. So once crossover has completed downloading, we're going to go to finder and I'm going to open our downloads folder. I'm going to open up crossover. So I'm going to double click on here and this has extracted the crossover application into the downloads folder. And then what we're going to do is to drag this into our applications folder and then let go. And now when I look at my applications folder, I'm going to scroll down and then find the crossover application. And what we're going to do here is to double click on crossover. Crossover is going to give this option menu here. We're going to press open. And then what we're going to do is press the try now button. So if you've already purchased this, what you can do is click the unlock with purchase info. But today we're going to be using the trial. Here we're going to press try now. So now we have entered the crossover main menu. So what we're going to do here is to click install a Windows application. And I'm going to select the Steam application. So I'm going to type in the word Steam. I want to select Steam here. So when we're using what's called a cross tie, we have some tabs here, which we can just check. We can select installer, and this is showing that it's downloading the Steam installer from the Codeweaver's website. If we select bottle here, we can also see that Steam is being created under a Windows 7 64-bit bottle. This is often the most compatible for most games. Here we're going to press the install and finish tab, and then click the install button. So this is now downloading and installing various dependencies, including the Steam software itself, as well as various fonts and software dependencies. So this might take a little bit of time depending on the speed of your internet connection. Whenever an installer window like this pops up, just press yes. Here we're gonna press next. We need to agree to everything and press next. Here we can skip the user information and then click install. Here we're gonna click finish. So this is now the Windows Steam installer. So here we're gonna press next. We're gonna select our language. I'm going to install it in the default location. Now we're going to press Run Steam and click Finish. So here it's installing the rest of the Steam application, so just wait for this to complete. So if you don't have an account already, what you can do is click Create a New Account button here and you can create a free Steam account. If you have an account already, then click the Login to an Existing Account button. And now we're going to enter our account name and password. So now it's asking us to complete our Steam Guard authorization, so just check your email for a support code. Now we have been granted access to our Steam account, we're going to press Finish. So it's saying here that the installation of Steam has completed, just press the Done button here. So as you can see, Steam has now loaded up and we have the Windows version of Steam. You can tell because Minimize and Maximize buttons come from the Windows interface of this launcher. They don't have the macOS interface, which would be the red and yellow and green button on the top left instead. So now that we've installed Steam, we can go ahead and install and launch any Windows game, which is not normally available on the Mac operating system. So the next thing to be aware of is that if you want to enable DirectX 10 or DirectX 11 games to work, we're going to have to enable DXVK. So we're going to control click on our Steam bottle here. We're going to mouse over the settings menu here, and we're going to click on DXVK backend for D3D11. So this allows DirectX 10 and DirectX 11 support in the bottle. So I'm going to click this now. So if you don't have this enabled, then any software launched is going to default to the Wine D3D backend, which is going to have different compatibility. It's probably going to work worse and be less compatible than this option here. So just make sure this is ticked. I'm going to tick this now. And if I control click on Steam again and go to settings, you'll see that this has been enabled. So in most situations, you want this enabled in order to run more modern games. So now I'm going to double click on Steam and reopen the launcher. And I'm going to maximize this window. So once we have Steam installed, we can go ahead and search for Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga 
and then we can go ahead and purchase this game if you don't already have this purchased. So all you have to do is click add to cart and then make a purchase and then this will be added to your library. You can also buy the game on discount from gamesplanet.com. If you click the link in the description, you'll be helping to support this channel and the work that I do and you'll often get a discount that's going to be less than what it is on Steam. So for example, here it's 10% and all you have to do is to go ahead and make a purchase. And once you receive the Steam key, what you can do is go ahead and click games and then add and then activate a product on Steam and then you click next here and then you can enter the product code that you got from Games Planet and this will add it to your library. So once we've added the game to our Steam library, I'm just gonna go ahead and type in Skywalker and then we have our game here. And so if you haven't downloaded it already, you can go ahead and press the install button and then that's gonna go ahead and install the game for you. So the other thing that you do within Crossover is you should control click on your Steam bottle and then go to settings and then make sure that the DX3K backend for D3D11 is turned on. This will allow DirectX 11 games to render through Crossover. So when Pressplay is gonna install some dependencies, for example, DirectX for Windows. So just let this complete. So as you can see, LEGO Star Wars, the Skywalker Saga can run really well on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. We're able to get pretty good frame rates. This is at 1280 by 800 in a window. So I can just demonstrate that this is running on the Mac OS desktop. However, if I put this at 1080p, this also runs pretty well as well on the M1 Max chip. You'll find a little bit of stuttering, especially in the beginning, but once the shaders have compiled, then this is gonna run a lot better. So here I'm running the game at 1080p and it seems to run pretty well at full screen. I've actually tried to minimize the stutter using the upgraded versions of DXVK and MultiVK. However, I'm unable to launch the game as it complains about a DirectX 11 graphics card compatibility error. Okay, it looks safe now. So if anyone manages to get this working with the upgraded DXVK and MultiVK, then please leave a comment telling me which versions of DXVK and MultiVK you managed to upgrade to and managed to get this game working on. However, as you can see, the game seems to work fine even without this particular upgrade. The stuttering is fairly minimal, and once you've compiled the shaders for a specific action or level, then that shouldn't repeat again, and it should be pretty smooth sailing. So you should be able to run this game pretty well on the M1 chip. If you'd like to find out more about games that are compatible for the M1 Apple Silicon Mac, then please make sure to check out the M1 Compatible Games Master List. I'll leave a link to this in the description. This contains a really long list of games which are compatible through the M1 Apple Silicon Mac, whether it's running natively through ARM, through Rosetta 2, or one of the compatibility layers such as Crossover or Parallels. So please check it out. I'll leave a link to this in the description. Please also make sure to check out the Apple Gaming Wiki YouTube channel. This contains a playlist of game benchmarks that I performed on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac, and there are literally hundreds of games which I've tested. So please check this out. I'll leave a link to this in the description as well. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. I've got lots of other videos like this on my YouTube channel, so please check it out. If you like the video, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.